Yeah, hi all. So in my previous lecture, we stuck in one of the module, which I'm showing that by using a module, how we can create our RDS instance. So today, first we continue that thing. Then after that, I will show you about one of the important topic in this, that is a workspace. Workspace. And after that, I will show you about the what are what is state file and state locking, right? So let's move to our previous practical. So what I'm going to do, so by using a module means uh, we have module which is already written by a Terra in a Terraform registry. I am pulling that code and after pulling that code, I try to create my own, own RDS instance, right? So we had already written the code previously also. So let me go over there first. Yeah. Let's have an L. So which one is the last? This is for the RDS. Okay, folder 19 iPhone RDS. Okay, ls have an L I need to give, and now I'm open this file. Let me open this file. So I show you previously this is the detail of your provider, and this is your credential of your provider. Then after that, where from where we pull this module? So we had pulled this module from here. So module for Terraform AWS RDS. So just we need to go over here and copy this code which I had copied here. Then after that, what all are the inputs we need to give? The first one is the identifier, the identifier I had given. Then engine, engine is my MySQL I had given. Engine version, which type of version you need to use. I had given family is used for the DB parameter and major engine version, which means the DB option. So in my previous lecture, I already told you about what all are the PB this uh, parameter group and option group so uh, let me show you again so when you are creating this uh, your instance the two thing is uh, by default attached to this that is your parameter group and second one is your option group so these both are that thing then after that you need to choose your instance class which i had choose in my previous lecture also and also allocated this memory so this thing we created previously also and uh, this time i am giving this database name username and port here right so let me just uh, save this file and start running it. So previously we are facing few errors. Uh, that's why I am doing this this time also. Okay. Not Terraform. The land I need to do. Okay. Now Terraform apply. Hyphen hyphen auto approve. So now you know about the why we are using this auto group, right? In my previous lecture also, I had told you about this and uh, let me, this will take time. So let me ask you one question that if I want to know it's identify prefix. So how we get to know, because after the creation, we only get to know this. So just uh, comment to me how we can get this. So I'm giving you the answer that is by using an attribute reference, you get this value. And uh, how we can give this attribute reference? The first you need to give your resource name. Then after that resource name, what you need to give? You, whatever the user defined parameter name you had given. Then after that dot, whatever things you want to know, right? Like here ARN you want to know. So dot ARN. So that is called attribute reference. So now you can see that this is in creating a state. So this time this will create, no problem with that, right? Now let's suppose I have another window. This is my window. Let me the big one. This one. All right. Let me again go to the folder. Sixteen. No, uh, that's a nineteen RDS. Okay. So now let me apply. If you see here, this file is already there, and this is the same folder. Now let me try to apply this apply hyphen hyphen auto approve what you will see see error acquiring the state lock so what it meaning let me open this one again so what it means so as soon as you are try to create your infrastructure again so this time this is in a lock condition let's suppose you are working in one of the file right this is one of the infrastructure you are gonna create and at the same time your partner had come and he also saw that uh, i let's suppose you miss ec2 instance here 
EC2 instance in this infrastructure, you will made some changes and start doing things over here, right? And now same time, your partner had also come and he also observed that EC2 is not there. So without asking you, he had created one EC2 instance and start creating its infrastructure. So in this scenario, what thing will come, right? So if this will execute, then you will get two EC2 instance. So I think means uh, what it means. It means that this conflict had come, right? Because uh, you also created the EC2 instance and your friend also created the EC2 instance. But for the infrastructure, we require only one EC2 instance. So here is concept of state locking. So whenever one you apply his code, after that, no one other person cannot apply this code. So this is called a state locking mechanism. So let's suppose in this infrastructure, what I had did in this infrastructure, my friend had already created RDS instance. So here I had taken the example of the EC2 instance, but here what we are seeing right now. So this is a case of RDS instance. And as soon as my friend had come after lunch, then he also created this. But this time what he had see here, this error, state uh, error acquiring the state lock. What it mean? The state is already locked by your friend or someone in the team. And so this is the funda of our state locking. Now I'll show you why I told you this. Let's suppose this is your infrastructure team, All right? The, this time we have this file in our local, right? But if uh, you are working in any of a uh, cloud to platform or anywhere else, so you have a big team, right? So in this team, you have mean, let's suppose that we have 20, uh, nearly about 20 member in my team. So all they are having their own local file right local state file is there for one two three till 20 they have local file but if they made the changes here what will happen if they made changes let's suppose they are creating rds instance this will create rds instance one and uh, throughout the project they require only one rds instance but once he started created the second also start created right because uh, he, he was not aware that first had created and same like that the third is also start created so what we are doing whenever we are working in a project we are not seeing this local file. We have to cap this local file in any of the repository so that our local file is there. Local file is there. So whenever we need to take any type of state, so that will not take from our local file that will directly local take it from our this. Oh, sorry. This is not a local file. This is our state file. Let me write it. This is our state file so that will take uh, our state file through remote location not from our local location and uh, i told you why this is so because whenever we are working in a project we don't want any type of conflict in our infrastructure because whenever we are working with our infrastructure what it means it means that uh, we are directly linked with our billing of our or you can say you are directly linked to the business right so that's why instead of cap this file in our local we have to cap this in a any remote repository uh, so for that you can use s3 or gitlab is also there now it also start uh, creating this state file and all so these all are the means you can create put it anywhere else also but these are the few examples which is mostly used in the project all right so let's check this out so uh, hope so you get to know that what uh, is our state file and what is state locking so i show you one demo of the state locking right and here also our previous practical was done let us check on our rds instance yeah so this is already created and the machine which we had take that is a db dot t3 dot micro yeah all are up and running and this is also available so let me destroy this thing So whenever you are creating RDS instance, you need to destroy it because this will not come in, means into your free tier eligibility, right? So today's agenda, we had covered about uh, the module, which is pending from our previous practical. So this I had covered and the state file I had covered. What is state file? Now we are talking about one of the important lecture that is on workspace. So previously we saw about modules. So what is module? We have one modules and different different team want to use. We can use it, right? The, the same code, we can use it and modify as accordance to that. This is the concept of module. So same as it is, we have workspace. Let's suppose uh, 
this is our infrastructure we have dev environment then second we have our qa environment and third is our prod environment let's suppose in my this uh, dev environment i require t2.micro right in my test environment i require t2.small and here this is our prod environment so i want t2.micro right so what we can do we can change means this is my workspace let me write here also this is my workspace dev this is my test and this is for my prod prod right so instead of writing long long code what we can do we can declare one workspace so instead of going directly to the workspace i'll show you what we are doing means what we are gonna perform now okay. okay this is still taking time let me come out from this folder and create my one folder that is a folder 20 okay mkdar folder 21 let me create it and folder 21 so you can see this this is our clean file is there right so now let me create one file here notepad dot tf so let's suppose we have instance variable instance and uh, what is uh, what all are the instance type we have L let me take the it's uh, data type is equals to map and values what i want is whenever i get this uh, let me write dev environment then i need to use t2.micro whenever i have test environment i need t2.small right, these are the two things and now let me create it output this is my output and here we need to write o and what value i need to write war dot instance right war dot instance and what i require right. if i am using a dev environment then i need to use dev here let me close all of these first yeah so if i am using dev environment then i require t2 dot micro if i am using test then i need to replace it with test so let us move to our screen and uh, just initiate my code terraform in it invalid code map okay uh, we don't need to use this double quotation just initialize it terraform apply hyphen hyphen auto approve Right. so what output you get the output is t2.micro if i need to want to use test environment then i need to write the test environment so in the test environment you will get t2.small so see whenever we are working in a project we don't know about the t2 or t2 i am not here come here and change this thing again and again right whenever we are automating by using any ci tool so what we need to do first so there is one you can say keyword is there that is called lookup right so let me do this one we have to look up here and what we need to look up this one right let me run my code again look up for the test environment so still we are getting the same output right for the t2 small and t2 one let us move to again let me open my paint yeah so you can see here where is my file yeah so you can see here the lookup functionality also giving the same output now how we can use this type of things in our workspace so what is basically a workspace so workspace is basically give you a facility to isolate from the other infra infrastructure like if you are working in a dev environment then all the code which you are running that is of only dev environment like that if you are apply this code then only you will get t2 dot micro if you, i am talking about uh, your test so that will give you this t2 dot small only so first what we need to do the first we need to create our workspace and how we create our workspace so for that there is one command in the terraform that is terraform workspace list 
so you can see here i had not created any workspace so let me create two workspace first so for creating a workspace what is the command new dev this is the first one and this is my second one right so ls oh, sorry let me see this so we have three environment so now i am in the test environment you can see here there is one star is coming and if i want to switch my workspace then what i need to do select a dev environment so you will switch to the dev environment you can check this out yeah so start it come up there so now what i need to do let me again go to my code so instead in the lookup we have also one function let me first write another output block output one uh, the value we need to give what is the value we need to give that is a terraform dot workspace so this is a keyword from our terraform by which you can see your workspace in which workspace you are in so let us apply an auto group so we are still in a dev and let me change it to select test so now what you get so you get one type of isolation right so one type of isolation so whenever you are running a code you don't need to change anything you just need to change your workspace once you change your workspace you get automatically t2 micro or t2 small i'll show you it for that so the it this was understood right yes or no yes okay so this is understood so what i need to do just copy this let me just copy this one and we need to paste it here right so now we have no dependency on our code right we don't have to come inside the code or make some changes so let us check this out so you get t2 dot small now let me change my select dev again out of room so this will come t2 dot micro right so without going into the code i had changed the workspace so what type of scenario you will face in your project or in your practical is something like that i am talking about a real time project right so let's suppose whenever a junior person is coming so most of our infrastructure things not given to the juniors directly means they we are not allowing them to create direct resources so we, or if someone is given them so they are giving some type of what we say they have to pass something like that if we are giving them right that you can create resources or destroy resources directly on the environment then before that you have to require permission or you have to raise request right so what uh, as a junior per perspective you have this workspace right yeah your senior member had created already this thing for you all the resources and all all the modules they will create it for you just what you need to do just whenever there is changes right whenever they made any type of changes so you need to require which type in which workspace you need to run just this is the task mostly means in mostly you will get the module and from that module you need to write some type of infrastructure code and where this work space thing is come into the picture right so this will give you one type of isolation to from the other environment so whatever things you had created for this dev you can create it all of the three things you can create in one code but as per the workspace that will run isolatedly right so hope so this is clear to you all if it was not clear you can watch my video again so that will give you more clarity about this and otherwise we are also going to do some practicals on this in my upcoming lectures so our agenda for today is completed so first i had created this module uh, let me check this is yeah, it is still destroying but uh, if you go here and refresh this i think this is already destroyed yeah so this is destroying and second thing i told you about the state file and state locking so whenever you are working in any of the project your friend is also working means your teammate is also working in a project so that's why we are not kept the state file in our local system we have to kept it in s3 or in a gitlab also so that we all whole team should have only one state file and the third thing is of workspace which give you the isolation from the another environment so that's all for today and uh, yeah only small small topic is left so i'll give you a i'll write it down and share with you 
don't worry about that and all the code i will share it to you all right and if you have any question you can comment out and please if you are searching for a job so you can join our telegram group also especially for the devops purpose only you can join our group so thanks thanks for watching